just saw was just one of the many things you can do with Turbulence FD in Cinema 4D. If you want to learn how, stay tuned. What's up Survivalists, it's Jay from Team Devin Jay here to enhance your animations and tell your stories. If you're new here, I make Minecraft animation tutorials every Monday, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to not miss any uploads. If you're not, welcome back. The first part of this video will talk about what Turbulence FD is, but if you already know that, skip to this timestamp to see how it works, as well as a basic run through of the things that you can do. Finally, I'll take you through exactly how I made this scene, as well as giving you some tips on troubleshooting. So what is Turbulence FD? Turbulence FD is a paid plugin for Cinema 4D that simulates fluids. It uses a voxel-based solver, which basically means 3D pixels, that are much better to calculate basic fluid simulations than traditional 2D pixels. Though it's very easy to use and very easy to learn, it's very difficult to master. I myself am still learning and I've completed the Turbulence FD for Cinema 4D Essentials training course on lynda.com. I suggest anyone else on lynda to check that out too, but YouTube and Vimeo are also good sources. So what's possible with Turbulence FD? Well, it's meant for basic fluid simulations like fire, smoke, burning stuff, spreading fire, or even... You get the gist. For more advanced fluid simulations, you'd be looking at some external programs like Houdini, but for my animated web series, Levis Lear, and for all other beginners' intents and purposes, Turbulence FD is enough. Okay, so how does Turbulence FD work? Well, it relies on two key elements, the container and the emitter. Most of the settings and functions can be changed in the container, so if you ever need to change anything, check the container. Any editable object can be used as an emitter. Cubes, spheres, even people. All you have to do is right click, go under Turbulence FD tags, and select Emitter. In the Emitter tag, there are four options that allow you to choose between what fluid is emitted. We're only going to worry about three of them. Temperature is fire, density is smoke, steam, or dust, and fuel enables spreading. I've never had to use burn, but it's good for making small-scale flames like candles or torches. Simply changing the channel value to anything over zero enables it. For this torch, I'll only enable temperature, but multiple channels can be active at a time. Now that we have our emitter, we need to let it know where it can emit. To do this, we'll create a container by going up to Plugins, Turbulence FD, Turbulence FD Container. By default, we get this one meter cubed white wireframe box that tells us where our fluids can simulate. Simply resize this to fit and move it into position. Then you're ready to go. Note, the bigger the box, the more RAM is used. Don't make an unnecessarily big box or you risk crashing your system. To start the simulation, go up to Plugins, Turbulence FD, Simulation window. Make sure your container is selected and hit Simulate. You should begin to see your simulation happen. Stop the simulation for now, you can continue this anytime later. The Turbulence FD workflow basically involves going to the container settings and tweaking each part over and over until you get the result you like. More on this later. You may think, oh, I'm probably gonna need a pretty powerful computer for this. And you wouldn't be completely wrong. Having a good GPU with over four gigabytes of RAM will significantly increase the speed it takes to calculate the simulations. Up to 12 times the speed, according to the developers at Jawset. If you don't have a good GPU, well, that's fine too, as long as you have a decent CPU. I'm talking about like a, a high-end i5 or a good i7 maybe, but that's consumer level stuff and it works like a charm. If you're running a Mac, you may want to also invest in extra storage space because Turbulence records all its simulations into caches. Depending on how good you want your simulations to look, the size of your cache could vary from under 50 megs to over 5 gigs. Alright, before I get to the tutorial of this scene, I want to see an end to bad, cringy animations and build a community around supporting each other and defining a high level of standard. If this sounds like a worthy cause for you to fight for, I'd love for you to be part of our public Discord server. Back to the main video. What I have in this scene is a half-built room with an animated FMR animate guy. For this wall, I simply used a Voronoi with dynamics and had a sphere fly into it. I won't go over how to do the wall in this video, but I will if it's requested enough. Make sure to let me know in the comments below. The first thing I did was apply a TFD emitter tag onto the Voronoi and enable density channel. Then I fit the container to the room. Now I could simulate now like I showed you in the example before, but I don't feel like sitting here forever waiting for something terrible to simulate. 
let's take a visit into the settings. First thing I changed was the voxel size in the container tab. If you look closely here, it says max memory usage followed by three numbers. 250 by 250 by 250 is a good standard for a very sharp high res simulation, but we don't need that. A low res sim will do good enough for me. To increase the resolution, lower the voxel size. To decrease the resolution, up the voxel size. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the bigger the cache and the longer it'll take. Then I scrolled down a bit to the cache settings and disabled cache temperature because we aren't using the temperature channel. We are, however, using the density channel, so I checked that. If I wanted to up-res the simulation later, which means increasing the resolution without re-simulating from scratch, I'd check cache velocity as well. But I'm not going to do that, so I won't. The simulation tab is your best friend. Firstly, your simulation may not take up the entire timeline which is what Turbulence does by default. Open up timing and set your timing. Keep in mind time scale here too. You can increase the time scale if you find that your simulation is going too slow or decrease it if your simulation is going too fast. Then let's go to the density tab and see what's in there. If it isn't active already, make it active. While you're at it, check and make sure that temperature isn't active. Each value here controls a different factor of the sim. Let's go over each one real quick. Clip below is basically where the sim cuts off at the top. Diffusion is how blurry the sim is. Dissipation is how fast it fades out. Gravity is, well, how strong gravity is. And gravity direction is represented by vector values corresponding to X, Y, and Z. To add some more details to your sim, we can go up to the vorticity and turbulence tabs. Now I won't go into too much detail into what these do, but just know that they add more detail into your sim. For vorticity, all you need to do is up the value. And for turbulence, you need to up the value and change the smallest and largest size down here for the best results. Oh, and make sure you have both intensity channels set to density. Let's move over to the viewport rendering tab. The first option here, show bounding boxes, is the wireframe of the container. I turn mine off after I'm happy with the simulation, so I can do a hardware render without things getting in the way. If you want to learn more about hardware renders and how you can render frames in less than half a second, check out my tutorial on time saving up here. I changed the channel here to density, which basically tells Turbulence to only display the density sim. I also set the shader to a smoke shader since I'm simulating smoke. If you want to preview more than one channel at a time, you're going to need a preview fluid container by going up to plugins, Turbulence FD, preview fluid container. There's not much left to do here, so let's move on to the last tab, rendering. Open up the smoke shader tab and set the channel to density. Click on the mapping graph here and click on the lowest node. Change the X value from 0 to 0 0.01. This is a trick I learned from Linda that can cut your render times in half. I went down the color and opacity tab and lowered the thickness from 15 to 10 and messed with the colors a slight bit too. Now it's time to simulate and it's as simple as a single click of a button. Once the sim is completed, I'll go over it a few more times and tweak any necessary settings. But I'm happy with what I have now. If you run into any trouble not being able to see the fluids in your viewport even though you've done everything right, Double check that viewport render is set to the correct channel and make sure that back face culling isn't on. To check whether back face culling is on, go to options, configure, view, and uncheck back face culling. If your simulation is desynced from your final render, you must be using my workflow. My usual render FPS is 24, but my working FPS is 12. This is to simulate real time playback by accommodating for lag. To solve the desync issue, make sure your project frame rate is the same as the render frame rate before simulating. I usually do two sims, a low res one at 12 FPS and a high res one at 24 FPS. Let's take a look at my render settings. To get a few obvious ones out of the way first, Zblur is my plugin for depth of field, Turbulence FD renderer should already be enabled, and ambient occlusion because I actually care about making my animations look good. The big thing to note here is the multi-pass render. If you've never used multi-pass, here's a quick explanation. If you just have save enabled, Cinema will render out a single file, whether that's an MP4, MOV, or some sort of image sequence. Then you import this into Premiere or whatever you edit with and voila, job done. With multi-pass rendering, Cinema will render multiple passes that you can composite yourself along with the original composited file. This gives you more control over each individual element. To set this up, first enable multipass by clicking the checkbox here, then go to this multipass button and select the channels you want. Turbulence FD uses the atmosphere channel, but keep in mind so does the environment object which you use for fog. I tend to enable atmosphere multiply as well just in case, and these can be used as masks in After Effects for example. Go back to the save tab and check alpha channel. Twirl down the multipass image settings and check straight alpha. 
This makes it so that all non-smoke elements appear transparent. Finally, I always advocate using PNG sequences instead of video formats like MP4 or MOV, but this is particularly important if you're simulating fire. First of all, the main reason I use an image sequence instead of a video format is because I can pause the render and resume it whenever I want. And secondly, this is important because PNG sequences can carry 16-bit color data. When you're simulating fire, there's always a tendency for turbulence to generate a value higher than 1. So to preserve as much color data as possible, as well as giving you finer control, especially when color grading, having a 16-bit render is much better than the MP4's 8-bit. If you want to go overboard, you can also use the 32-bit data that comes with a TIFF sequence. But personally, I find that to be excessive. The downside of having higher bits is the increased file size, so don't be silly. If you don't need the higher color channel data, just don't use it. With that said and done, we're ready to render. raw file looks like. And here's what it looks like composited and graded. Hey, do you want to learn animation but don't know where to start? Why not check out my beginners to advanced playlist designed to help you improve your animations right here. If this video has helped you, don't forget to share it and help your friends too. I'm a YouTuber trying to influence and change Minecraft animations for the better while working on my own animated series, Levislear. You can play a massive role in the development of Levislear by watching more of my videos or checking out my Patreon. With that said and done, this has been Shay from Team WJ to improve your animations and tell your stories. Cheers!